It's finally here. It's been over two months since that first trailer dropped, and fans have been frothing at the mouth waiting for that second trailer to really give us a good glimpse of what we can expect in Godzilla Kong The New Empire when it releases on March 29th. Now, this trailer is incredible. There is just so much to cover here, I don't even know where to start. We get a better look at the leading Alpha Titans, as well as the antagonist, the Scar King, and even get a glimpse at the gigantic world-ending threat, Shimo. And there's even some secrets you definitely missed on your first viewings. We even get a brand new poster, which we'll take a close look at the end of the trailer breakdown. So buckle yourselves in. Let's break down Godzilla Kong's second trailer. So the trailer starts out in Egypt, continuing what we saw in that first trailer, where Kong's new cyborg hand reaches out from a newly emerged Hollow Earth tunnel. We hear Dr. Eileen Andrews returning from Godzilla vs. Kong, and in the background we can hear her saying, For centuries there was harmony obviously referring to Godzilla and Kong's species. Next up, we get some crispy-looking water, which just looks so good I could drink it. The water physics in all these MonsterVerse films has been nothing short of incredible. In the next shot, we can see it's actually Godzilla in his evolved form that we'll see change throughout the film. His magenta dorsal plates piercing the water, and then the camera submerges, giving us a really haunting look at Godzilla's face, with his eyes glowing in the deep water, looking super menacing. The Titans were the guardians of nature, and the great apes were the protectors of humanity, says Dr. Andrews as we get this beautiful shot of Kong reaching out to Gia in a similar way to Godzilla vs. Kong. And they both appear to be in the Hollow Earth since we can see the crystals that were spotted in that first trailer. Kong's looking really exhausted here, and if you look closely, his right hand is all bloody and mangled. So this appears to be shortly after he gets his ass kicked by the Scar King, and Gia has come to comfort him, which is just really touching. I'm of course happy the film is going to be ridiculous and action-packed, but I'm also happy it's going to have these nice, smaller emotional moments. Next up, we get a scene of Gia in class, but the light is warping around her as she begins to have visions, which means she may be a psychic, or at least the MonsterVerse equivalent. Ash starts falling around her, and the clocks begin to distort before making the shape of three pyramids and showing us all the mayhem that's about to unfold in the film. In the montage of clips, we actually get our first official look at Shimo as it'll appear in the film, and it is huge! Just look at it compared to Evolved Godzilla. This battle looks to be absolute chaos. And in Gia's eyes, we can actually get a faint glimpse of Mothra, looking even more angelic than ever before. Because of these visions, Gia believes something is wrong with her, seeking guidance from Dr. Andrews. The three pyramids from her vision clearly is leading them to the Pyramids of Giza. But what is the significance? Perhaps Scar King's lair is directly under the pyramids, since it looks like Kong is running from Shimo through to Egypt. Next up, we hear Dr. Andrews again, which seems to be the voice of God for these New Empire trailers, saying Monarch discovered a signal and that Gia can feel it, as well as Godzilla and Kong, and that even they're scared. But we get a close-up of Kong by the ocean as something passes over him. I can't imagine this is Godzilla or Scar King because nothing is that big, and this looks to be too early in the film for this to be an encounter with Shimo. It could be Trapper delivering the Beast Glove to Kong, since we see a shot later on of Trapper in some kind of flying heavy equipment. Next up, we get this epic shot of Godzilla glowing blue. This could either be a sign he's begun to evolve and his body is telling him to find somewhere to hibernate, or this could be his most intense intimidation display, as he knows what's coming. Next up, we see Andrews in Monarch, which has gotten an even more neon makeover, where she invites Trapper to join them on a trip to the Hollow Earth, and Trapper just seems like such a joy. You feel like going for a ride? Thought you'd never ask. Dan Stevens has such charisma to the roles he plays, so I can't wait to see what he brings to the MonsterVerse. Next up, we get a better look at the new Heave, which looks to be a bit more bug-like now, which could be deliberate to blend in with the Hollow Earth Titans. And we were right in assuming that this was a Hollow Earth tunnel. 
Try not to swallow your tongue. <laughs> That's some real hold on to your butts energy right there. I love it. And then we see Kong jumping straight into the tunnel like a kid cannonballing into a swimming pool. And then we get another opportunity for Warner Bros. to make a Godzilla Kong theme park ride. There was that awesome set piece in Godzilla vs. Kong. Now this. Make it happen, Warner Bros. I'll give you approximately... Uh, 20 pounds. That's all I've got. Now they're in the Hollow Earth, we get some more of the clips we saw in that first trailer where Kong meets Suko, which looks to do some badass things that we'll actually see later in the trailer. But next up, we get something really interesting. Trapper presses on a wall of some kind, which appears to be fleshy, and it begins to illuminate a bright blue. Now this could be the cocoon of Godzilla, since it's blue, but it could also be Mothra, since she had a very similar cocoon in 2019. The trailer doesn't really hint towards what it is, but I'm willing to bet that it's some titan that's hibernating. Trapper says it's not just a signal, that's a call for war as we see Kong turn around to face the mighty Scar King, who just looks so terrifying. And we get a glimpse at some other of Kong's species, and it appears that some are submissive to Scar, whilst others actively support him. We can see some Kongs are beating the war drums, and some are bowing in submission. Some of these Kongs will be Scar's right-hand men, his apex team of hunters that he trusts and uses to keep the others in line. Scar jumps down to face this new Kong that has yet to be branded with his red mark, symbolizing that he owns the Titans. They both face off, roaring at one another before charging, and immediately Kong gets his ass handed to him. Scar wraps the whip around Kong's hand and cuts him, and Kong screams in pain. It appears that at the end of the spine whip, there is a crystal that may have some relation to the giant formations we saw earlier in the trailer. Clearly, this is a weakness for Titans, almost being a kind of kryptonite that Scar uses against his enemies. But then we see Kong looking at something with more fear than even he gave Godzilla. And then the camera pushes through the lava to see Shimo with bright glowing eyes, watching Kong's every move. And then Kong quickly grabs his axe to defend himself before Shimo fires an intense blast of ice breath, which looks to overpower Kong. Following this, Kong likely realizes he's outmatched and retreats from the fight after receiving critical injuries. Then we get that great shot of Godzilla and Kong running side by side, returning to show the Scar King what a real Apex Titan is. Next up, we get this beautiful shot of Rio de Janeiro getting a dash of snow, something it never gets. And if we zoom in, you can see Shimo standing upright, firing into the sky which is likely how he manipulates the weather. I love that some titans appear to represent different elements. Ghidorah is electricity, Godzilla is water and radiation, Kong is earth, Mothra is light, and Shimo is ice. Either way, Rio is getting flattened. Sorry, Brazil. We even get this lovely perspective shot of buildings exploding around civilians, which just looks incredible. This right here is what we flock to Godzilla films to see. Now, we get a real interesting shot here because we can actually see Godzilla firing at Kong. I thought they were meant to be friends now. Clearly, they still are going to have some misunderstandings in the film that they're going to have to settle. And in the shot, we can see Godzilla is just full on blowing up the pyramids, which I guess throws out Egypt's plans on rebuilding the marble casing. Trapper is overheard as he's dangling from what I believe is the heavy lifting equipment that was used to build Kong's new beast glove, saying they don't have to like each other, they just have to work together, which I'm pretty sure is the tagline for the film. Now we get a badass shot of Kong in either Morocco or Brazil lunging forwards at the Scar King. And in the shot in the corner, we can see none other than Shimo, just kind of chilling. Get it? Because because it's a frost titan, like chilling. He's like cold, like he like he's like he's just chilling. Please laugh, 
Please, somebody left. Likely being distracted by Godzilla, who is also in the battle somewhere. But what's gotten Kong so angry here? Well, we can actually see Scar is bullying little Suko. Clearly, at this moment, Scar knew he effed up, because Kong beats down on Scar so hard that even his tooth comes out, which is just wild. This next shot, my god, this next shot. Words cannot describe how much I love this. We're still getting good Godzilla vs. the military action in this, as the G-Man looks to be coming ashore by some kind of power plant, possibly radioactive, as he's searching for a food source to help evolve. And you aren't ready for this. Just wait for it. Boom! Yes, we get a nuclear pulse. Not the thermonuclear kind from King of the Monsters, this one is all natural, and it just looks epic. The difference from this and the 2019 one is likely that this is slightly weaker and has a shorter range. Since the 2019 one was so powerful, it would have killed him if it wasn't for Mothra, giving him a way to ventilate the radiation. In the next scene, we get a close look at the Hollow Earth civilization bowing their heads, potentially to the emergence of Mothra, who is being reborn to help Godzilla and Kong defeat Scar King and Shimo and we see the walls glimmering a beautiful gold color, which makes me believe this Mothra will be a royal gold, shining like the sun, instead of the more blue bioluminescence from King of the Monsters. Next, we see Suko throwing a boulder at a Kong's face, who was likely one of Scar's right-hand men, set out by the Scar King to capture him and bring him back to captivity. This looks to be set in the anti-gravity zone of the Hollow Earth, so I really hope we get a Godzilla fight in this Zero-G area. Come on, you cowards. You know what to do. We then see Kong getting the Beast Glove for the first time, with Beast standing for Bio-Enhanced Anatomic Seismic Thunder, which means we'll likely get some form of lightning ability, which you kind of get a small glimpse of later on in the trailer. And I hope this doesn't just replace his axe, because this is cool, but that's iconic. No, I like it. This is brilliant, but I like this. Following this, we see Scar wrapping his whip around a building before tearing it off and throwing it at Kong. Now, who cares about physics because this is just epically silly, and Kong uses his new power glove to punch straight through the oncoming skyscraper, and he looks pissed, ready to give Scar King the beating he deserves. And the final shot of the trailer is this epic moment between Godzilla and Kong as they roar into the sky, likely after having a little scrap in Egypt, since in the background we can actually see the Sphinx just vibing. And I've seen some people saying they believe the sun is actually Mothra, and that they're hiding it just for the trailer, which, you know, might not be the worst tinfoil hat theory I've heard. And here, Godzilla just looks so good. His waist doesn't look nearly as bad or skinny as the promotional toys. He looks big and bulky and spiky, which I love. And then we get the title card. Godzilla Kong, The New Empire, coming March 29th. Wow, this trailer was its just amazing. It gave us a better look at what to expect from the story. It showed us more of the titans and what battles we'll be seeing. The visual effects are improved, some of the music sounds beastly, and it does seem to confirm some of our theories from a while ago. This does appear to be a tragedy, as we see some titans are enslaved, and they almost see Kong as their champion. But it's not going to be an easy journey for him. All the scenes just look spectacular, really a step up from even Godzilla vs Kong. Tonally, this looks to be much tighter overall embracing some of the campiness whilst not forgetting the heart. That's really what Adam Wingard excels at, and I cannot wait to see more of Trapper. He seems like such a delight to watch. Now, this isn't the only thing that was revealed today, but a brand new poster was shown off, which is just so much better than that first one, where now we get this excellently designed scene of Godzilla and Kong lunging into battle far better than them just standing there for no reason. This really feels like a buddy cop movie poster where the two leads have to learn to get along, and it's almost become a running gag for these posters to massively overscale the titans. Because look at that, they're taller than the clouds, and the helicopters are just microscopic. They've been doing this since 2014, and it's just so funny to me. 
So that's been Trailer 2 and the new poster for Godzilla Kong The New Empire. This looks so epic, I'm even more hyped than I was before. There's just so much to look forward to, and I cannot wait for March 29th. What was your favorite part of the trailer? Let us know in the comment section down below. We're gonna have a lot of New Empire content coming, so subscribe and stomp the notification button to not miss out on all those Godzilla Kong videos. And be sure to give this video a big old Kong-sized thumbs up. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.